Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. And Satan might be called an angel of light, but his kingdom is one of darkness. I was wanting to do the book of Joel, but before I can do the book of Joel, I had to do the fig tree, I had to do the olive, uh, and this is going to be on the day of the Lord, because the book of Joel mentions the day of the Lord, and then when you get to the New Testament, it talks of the day of Christ. Now, most churches that I'm familiar with teach that the day of the Lord is when Christ comes back in judgment. And they teach that the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture. Now, is this true? Are these two different events? Um, are, they, are these people denying that Jesus Christ is Lord? You know... When you say the day of the Lord and then you say the day of Christ, isn't Jesus Christ Lord? If he is, well, then wouldn't that make these two days the same event with a different name? Or are they two separate events? Well, I'm going to try to prove from the Bible alone that point. And I just did a Bible, well, not so much a Bible study, more a warning on uh, how these atheists are actually paid trolls from the same group of people that oppose Stephen, that oppose Jesus, that oppose the apostles, who crucified the prophet, I mean, killed the prophets, crucified Christ, and killed the apostles. Do you know that? Ten out of the twelve apostles died for their faith. The only apostle that died of old age was John on the Isle of Patmos that wrote, penned the book of Revelation. Judas hung himself, and then you had Paul. And according to history, Paul was also killed for his faith. So if Judas is out and Paul's in, that means 11 of the 12 apostles died for their faith. Stephen died for his faith. But why would we be any different? Uh, you know, I don't know. But I'm going to, you know, take a look from the Bible alone. Now, you know, we are supposed to warn the wicked. Now, a lot of churches and Christian people, church-going people, I should say, will tell you the Old Testament doesn't apply to us because we're New Testament Christians. And to that I reply, oh, really? Turn to Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel was a book of judgment, God pouring out his wrath. Upon his people for their wickedness. Verse 6, Ezekiel 33, verse 6. But if the watchmen see the sword come, now a watchman's the, the guy that do, on the wall doing the night watch. And what's the sword? Uh, you're talking about an invading army war. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, the trumpet was a warning, people. Think about that in the uh, book of Revelation. You know, the seven trumpets, seven trumps. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood, his life, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. See, the watchman had a responsibility to warn the people. And he didn't do it. 
So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood, or his life, but his blood will I require at that at thine hand. So we're supposed to warn the wicked. You know, a warning is like it's a dark, rainy night on a, a mountain road full of curves. And a car is speeding and he slows down and sees a cop waving at him in a raincoat, pitch black, in the driving rain. And he tells the guy, the bridge is out, turn around, the bridge is out. It had been raining, and the river rose and washed the bridge away. It's gone. So what does the driver do? Yells at the cop, get out of my way, you idiot. You know, I, your, your scare tactics, they don't scare me. And he drives off at a high rate of speed. Goes around the curb, comes up to where the bridge was, goes over the side into the water, drowns. Well, that's what an atheist is. It's warning him about hell is not scare tactics. It's a warning. And if he chooses to ignore that warning, that's up to him. I ignored it for many, many years. But the Lord got a hold of me, spanked me pretty hard. But we're supposed to warn them. And we do. We should. At least some of us do. So we're supposed to warn them of their wicked way. And warn them and tell them there is a way to escape. And that is Christ Jesus. All right, so we're going to take a look at the day of the Lord. Is Jesus Christ Lord? Is the day of the Lord and the day of Christ the same event? Now, you have to understand something. The Bible is generally written to people that believe it and read it and believe, right? But the Bible is also a warning to those that don't believe it who don't read it. And I believe that's what the day of the Lord is when it's mentioned. I believe the Lord is writing to the day of the Lord to those that don't believe as a warning. But to those of us that believe, it's the day of Christ. You got to realize something. The flood of Noah, when Noah built the ark, you know, it was God that closed the door. God himself closed the door to the ark. And then the flood came. Well, guess what? The flood of Noah was the salvation for him and his family. Because the world was so wicked, full of violence and murder. The flood of Noah was salvation to Noah and his family. In a sense, it was the day of Christ. But to the wicked, it was the day of the Lord. Remember this point. Sometimes judgment upon the wicked is salvation. A lot of people don't know it. Uh, they had that movie out, what was it, Pompeii? Pompeii was uh, horrible to the Christians. They uh, murdered all the Christians that they could get their hands on. A few of them escaped with their lives. They lost their homes, they lost their businesses, they lost everything. Matter of fact, uh, about, I think it was 10 days or two weeks or something before the 
Mount Vesuvius exploded the volcano and covered the city in ash. They took a pig, crucified it, called it Jesus, and marched it through the city mocking. And then they killed the Christians, took their homes, took their businesses, and a few of them escaped with basically what they could carry in the clothes on their back. Well, guess what? Mount Vesuvius, uh, when it blew up and covered the city in, in hot volcanic ash, uh, those people were dead in their beds. They didn't even, I mean, it just boom, and they were covered. There were probably not one Christian in that city when, it, when, when that happened. Remember when the, the angels came to Abraham and said, well, we're going to wipe out Sodom? And, you know, he, and, and Abraham's new, you know, his nephew Lot lived there, you know? He's like, Lord, please don't be angry with me, but, but wouldn't you spare the city for 50 people? Wouldn't you spare it for 40? Wouldn't you spare it for 30? Wouldn't you spare it for 20? Lord, would you spare the city? For ten righteous people. And the Lord said, For ten righteous people, I will spare it. Well, guess what? He couldn't find ten righteous people in that city. When LA, New York City, Atlanta, Detroit, Baltimore, when you can't find ten righteous people in those cities, look out. Look out, people. I think that's what happened in Mount Vesu uh, Vesuvius with uh, Pompeii. There were no righteous people in that city, and the Lord destroyed them all. They killed all the Christians that they could get their hands on. The Lord paid them back in spades. That's something the movie that came out a couple a while back didn't tell you, is it? Well, that's what the day of the Lord is. It's judgment upon the wicked. But the day of Christ, that's going to be the believer's salvation. Things are supposed to get really bad. Really, really bad for, for believers. Don't believe me? Read Mark 13. Read Matthew 24. You know? All right, so um, this is the introduction to the day of the Lord. All right, this is, uh, we're going to read Isaiah chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now, in the King James Bible, which I strongly recommend, usually the first time a word or a phrase appears will give you an idea of what the meaning of that is going to be for the rest of the book. In the context of of the material, it will tell you what it means. All right. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days, the, in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. So obviously this hasn't come yet. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law. Ooh, well, wait a minute, I was told the law was nailed to the cross. Well, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Well, that hasn't happened yet. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of of the Lord. Didn't Jesus say he's the light of the world? Oh yeah. Verse 6, Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they are replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines. 
and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of gold, I'm sorry, full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man, boweth, mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. Ooh, don't forgive them? Verse 10. Enter into the rock. Now, I did an entire Bible study on Jesus being the rock. Sorry, Catholics, it's not Peter. I had a, a papist tonight trying to have me prove that the Catholic Church is not the true church. Well, there might have been a time when Rome was among the true churches, but it most certainly isn't the true church today. I mean, you know, when you read Revelation 2 and, Ver and Revelation uh, 2, you read, and the churches of Asia, plural, churches of Asia. There was one in Laodicea, one in Sardis, one in Thyatira, one in Philadelphia. You know, Rome was only one of many churches. And Rome didn't give us the Bible. The Greek Orthodox Church gave us the Bible. The Greeks, the New Testament was written in Greek. Jesus is the rock, not Peter. Verse 10, enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Amen for that, right? For the day of the Lord, for the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. Tarshish is the ancient name of Spain, by the way. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone, the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. Uh, don't they make an idol to the beast in Revelation? And people are going to worship the beast? That's in the book of Revelation, people. I'm telling you, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. When your churches tell you, oh, don't read the Old Testament. That's for the Jews. It doesn't apply to us. You're listening to Satan. Either the, the, the pastor works for Satan or the pastor was trained by somebody in a Bible cemetery. I mean, semin seminary, cemetery, uh, same thing. Uh, that was trained by Satan. Now, they teach a lot of garbage in Bible colleges. Garbage. I should know. I went for six years. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for, the, for fear of the Lord. You know, isn't that in Revelation? The, the, they, they, they hide themselves in the caves and they tell the rocks, fall on us. And hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, if you want to read the whole chapters, I'll give you uh, Hosea chapter 10. And we're going to read verse 8 only. But if you want to go and read the whole chapter, you can. Uh, this is only going to be the introduction. Uh, this is going to be at least a three-part series. So, Hosea 10.8, the high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel... The sin of Israel shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, Cover us, 
and to the hills, fall on us. Luke 23, verse 30. Then shall they say, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. I mean, Luke 23, 30 is almost the same exact language as, as Hosea 10, 8. Well, how about Revelation chapter 6 and verse 16? And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see, people, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. You just got to read it. I mean, you know, half the times... I just make an outline of what I'm going to say, and then when I start getting into the reading this stuff, it just, you know, I remember these same words in other places in the Bible, and I just look them up and kind of put them together. It's all glory to the Lord. It isn't me, but I'm just saying it's, you know, I, I've been through the Bible enough times that, you know, a lot of times when I read something, I'll, certain word groupings, I'll say, hey, wait a minute, I've read that somewhere else. You know, Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah, there's a lot of good meat in these books, people. You just have no idea. All right, back to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Don't we read about an earthquake in the book of Revelation? Oh, yeah. Verse 20. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. Well, what a mole, where do moles live? Underground. Where do bats live? Caves. The bat cave. na 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 Batman. Uh, that's when I was real young. Verse 21. To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the jag ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils for wherein is he to be accounted of. Now we're going to come back to this. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Now the earth, uh, we're getting, the United States is getting ready to have a solar eclipse. The sun's going to be darkened. But it's not the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Oh, by the way, it's August 4th, 2017. Um, in a few days, we're going to have that uh, uh, solar eclipse. So, Mark 13, 25, and the stars of heaven shall fall. The powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Ooh, okay. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only. I shake not the earth only but also heaven. So God's going to, you know, uh, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 6. All right, Revelation 6, verse 12. Oh, let's go back a little bit. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God 
and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, You ever listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, other people? They say, Oh, they're soul sleep. When you die, you're, you're just like your soul. It's asleep. They don't know nothing. But it says here, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried. Who cried? The souls. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see, they were killed. They were killed for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. And they cried with a loud voice. Soul sleep is a lie, people. Verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them. That's why white robes were given unto them. That's the wedding garments. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants, servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, a great earthquake, shaking people, a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll. You don't know what a scroll is? You look inside the word, S-C-R-O-L-L. -L. Roll, R-O-L-L, -L, with an S-C in front of it. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves. They hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? A uh, very good question. Who will be able to stand in the day of the Lamb's wrath? You see, people, those that are covered in the blood that believe on him, that have been born again of the Spirit, we're not under God's wrath. We'll be judged. I've been judged. I've been spanked so many times. I, I've got marks on my backside. It still hurts when I sit down. But I deserved it. I, I deserved it. I still deserve it. You know, that's one of the things the Lord taught was repentance. You better believe it. But uh, this is only the introduction. Okay, I guess you could say this is part one. And uh, I haven't even gone through uh, the day of the Lord yet. And then we got to go through the day of Christ. So, what can I tell you? All right, so keep, and then once I finish that, I'm going to try to do the uh, book of Joel. But I'm laying the groundwork right now for the book of Joel. Book of Joel's end times, people. Latter days, last days. I, there's a lot of information in the Old Testament. But, uh, you know, if you've never read the Bible cover to cover, I know how to do it. It's simple. Turn your television off. Better yet, pull the cord out, unplug the cable and power, and throw it outside in the garbage on trash day. Yay. And then, uh, hey, there's a guy named Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y. He's a, I believe he's a Shakespearean actor, and he did, he voiced the Bible on, well, not, when I first bought it, it was cassette, but, you know, you can get it in CD, and it's on YouTube, too, if you look, um, but you can buy the New Testament on CD for, like, 
$25 with shipping and everything. Um, you know, uh, on either MP3 or a WAV file, uh, you could listen to the New Testament on your way to work. Or you could buy the whole Old and New Testament for about 85 or 100 bucks. So, um, and he uses the King James. Beautiful guy. He's got an incredible voice. I prefer the dramatized version myself. Um, but uh, I've listened to it many, many, many times. And read and done studies galore. So, uh, you know, everybody at work thinks I'm a freak. They're probably right. Back in my day, we, we used to call ourselves Jesus freaks when we were uh, late 60s and early 70s. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm old. But, uh, you know, they, they say, oh, Bob, hey, hey, yeah, uh, do you check out this new movie? And I'm like, uh, no. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, uh, you, you ever see this movie? Uh, no. How about, oh, 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 how about that movie? Uh, no. I'm like, what do you do with your time? You know, it's like, well, I don't obviously don't watch movies. I don't watch TV. Um, you know, I don't watch the Oscars. I don't watch the none of that stuff. TV, movies. I, I haven't been to a movie in over. It, I've probably seen been to the movie theater one time in 25 years. Seriously. Seriously. And if it wasn't for the weather on TV, I'd probably never turn the TV on. So. But I do like watching an occasional thing. Um, because you know what? The devil and his children love to brag and show things in your face what we're going to do in the future. Because what they were showing on, uh, on the movies and stuff 25 years ago, they're doing now. It's amazing. 20 to 25 years in advance, uh, they show you things, what they're going to do 20 to 25 years in advance. So, All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>